I love Jeffree Star. I love Shane Dawson. I have a lot of respect for the both of them. They are amazing creators, artistic, business oriented, and I just have a lot of respect for them. Now as for Jeffree Star, I think he is intelligent like a muff. Jeffree Star started from nothing, built herself or himself all the way to the top. He built his own brand, his own YouTube channel, his own makeup brand. He is so humble. You, it's like he can talk to anybody from off the streets. He doesn't look down on you even though he's got all that money in the world. He doesn't do that. Shane Dawson, of course, came out with a new series and this series is about Jeffree Star and him making a makeup palette for Shane Dawson. He knows nothing about makeup. He doesn't wear makeup. He doesn't do makeup. He knows nothing about it. But Jeffree, Jeffree Star is so intelligent that he can make it happen. They are literally filming everything from beginning to end, including financial numbers, okay? Which people are afraid to talk about. From the ideas, the creations, and then the product itself. Jeffree knows that he can sell it. He knows he can sell it. And Shane Dawson deserves success. It's time to be rewarded for all the hard work he does. I'm gonna watch a video by, and excuse me if I'm pronouncing it wrong, Andre Turby. He does narratives um, with cartoon illustrations and his videos are amazing and it makes you think twice. This video is called Why Jeffree Star is a Brilliant in Caps businessman. Okay, I already know. I just finished watching the third video of Shane Dawson's series with Jeffrey, and it's funny because I actually, um, after watching that video, I actually text a YouTuber and I told him, have you seen this? The marketing in these videos are amazing. They're making it sound so extravagant. They know what the hell they're doing and they're gonna do it and I have respect for it. But I don't know what this video is gonna be about. I don't know if it's negative or if it's positive, but I'm all for Jeffrey and, and Shane Dawson. So let's hope it's positive, but you never know. So let's go ahead and watch it. At this point, everybody's probably keeping up with Shane Dawson's new series with Jeffree Star. Whether you're a hardcore fan, you're interested in the business process behind the scenes, or you're not into makeup at all, but you can't help keeping up with the drama. But I think everyone finds a reason to watch every minute of these one hour episodes, because let's be honest, it's fantastic content. Now, yes. I've been watching Shane for many years, and as I've said many times before, I have a lot of respect for him as a creator. As for Jeffree Star, if you followed my videos for a while, you can probably trace my process of discovering his content. Okay, I don't I have I just discovered Andre's videos. I just discovered it uh, a few months ago. So I haven't been following. I don't know how he feels about Jeffrey. Dived into his videos for the first time in April, and like millions of others, I quickly became fascinated with this charismatic personality. Okay. However, after watching everything that went down in May, I was left with a lot of questions and mixed feelings regarding Jeffrey's character. But that's no surprise. Jeffrey Star has always been a polarizing figure with an immensely controversial past which haunts him to this day. So I was very intrigued going into Shane's new series, The Beautiful World of Jeffrey Star. And after watching the first few episodes, I have to say, it's fascinating how these two very polar opposite personalities are working so well together in I this know. very transparent business partnership. I know. And I think there's a lot to learn from watching them, not just for beauty enthusiasts, but for business in general. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, girl, you know who I'm talking about? YouTuber. I message, I'm telling you, it's so fascinating, this business world. I actually went to college for entrepreneurship, so I'm, I'm, I'm really fascinated with business. But man, when I saw these videos, I'm learning. I think Jeffree Star in particular shows exactly how he's reached the level of success that he has. And we'll take a close look at all of it in this video, so buckle up. But before we get into it, I would also like to say a quick thank you to the sponsor of today's video. So already, it's gonna be positive. Thank you. Because I'm probably gonna agree with most of these comments he's gonna say. Over the years, Shane Dawson's brand has seen an impressive evolution, from putting on wigs and makeup, to life hacks, cooking for his cat, to conspiracy videos, to wigs and makeup again. <laughs> 
No, but seriously, he's one of the most versatile and adaptable content creators we've seen on this platform. And yet, despite how many times he's changed up his content, his personal brand has stayed the same. He's yeah. the goofy, insecure, but lovable guy who doesn't like to leave the house and make self-deprecating jokes about his personal hygiene. <laughs> That's why his mascot is a pig. It's what makes him relatable. Shane is all of us to some extent. So I love that he's explaining because any of my subscribers, if you don't know who Shane Dawson is, I'm so glad I'm reacting to this video. And if you don't know who Jeffree Star is, I'm so glad you're watching this with me. So when the idea of creating his own makeup palette came up during the first docuseries in 2018, it was like, whoa, that's an interesting concept. But the big question was, how do you translate Shane's personal mascot, the pig, into a glamorous, real-life beauty product without losing the authenticity of his brand? It's like trying to start a fire with a piece of cheese. It was definitely going to be a challenge. But by all odds, it seemed like Jeffree Star was the one to make it happen. I think it's very interesting how the first episode of the series starts with a surprisingly candid moment at Shane's home, where he talks about how he hasn't been smart with his investments, and how so many others who have achieved success I know. after him I feel so, so bad. Much more money than him. Now, for a creator as big as Shane to open up and publicly admit that he feels this frustration, I think is very brave. Because it very could brave. easily be perceived as hypocritical, or as if he's complaining while he rests in his big mansion after driving around his huge backyard in his personal golf cart. But this feeling of not doing as well as others is a very normal it's human realistic. trait. No matter how well you're doing. It's realistic. Listen. I've been doing YouTube for two years on Bliss and Pris. We just reached 1,000 subscribers. How does that make me feel? It makes, there's been many times where I wanted to quit. It makes me feel very discouraged when I see people like Logan Paul do one year and his 17 million. Or when you see people that not even put in any effort and reach thousands. And if you look at some of my videos, I feel like I'm being creative with it, especially with my editing. I'm just not being noticed yet, but I can't give up. But I understand what Shane's feeling. Doing in life, you're always going to look at some Instagram influencer and feel like shit. And on top of that, being exposed to Jeffree Star's opulent lifestyle would make anyone feel poor. <laughs> so with Shane feeling like he's missing out, and with Jeffree's vast business experience, it only felt like the right thing to do. And I think the reason why this business venture will be very successful is because Shane Dawson and Jeffree yep. Star are complete opposite personality types that somehow are very much compatible. While Shane is very timid and careful as to not step on anybody's toes, <laughs> Jeffrey is very outgoing and loud. And to sure some capacity, is. he has proven to be very duplicitous. Lane Charles, Jacqueline Hill, whoever's free. Yeah. 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 That's what you like that. Yes. <laughs> The implication here being that he's ready to change his friends at any moment. And we've seen that happen a number of times. He not only cuts people out of his life very easily, but a lot of people who were at some point close to him have ended up taking major blows to their career. Jeffree Star is a very scary person to be around, and Shane <laughs> seems to be aware of this. I feel like I'm with the mob boss. She's a boss. She's a boss. She's so humble and sweet and caring and loving. But y'all, she can be a boss. And I'm not saying bitch. Being a boss don't mean you're a bitch. She's a boss. She has to be. She has to be in this cold world and in this cold business. That's why she's so successful. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which I like. It's like, I feel safe. But I also am like, what is it? But in this particular case, Jeffrey seems to be genuinely fond of Shane. Maybe it's because of how much Shane gives of himself, and Jeffrey feels a responsibility to protect him. Whatever the reason may be, they seem to complement each other very well. The series starts sort of rough. In the first episode, Shane is taken from his familiar habitat and thrown directly into this new world of private jets and personal bodyguards and screaming fans without really getting a moment to process any of it. It's kind of like a baptism by fire. Hey, he's preparing him. He's preparing him for when the, this day comes. And I think that's exactly what Jeffrey wanted, for Shane to experience it all firsthand and get this high adrenaline. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about.
and sneak peek into what success looks like within the beauty industry. And despite all the noise and fans running after them and fear of flying, Jeffrey somehow manages to make Shane feel comfortable. But it's the second episode that I think shows the genius of Jeffrey Star's business tactics. Because essentially what it all is, is a pitch towards Shane. Once we strip everything mm -hmm. else down, he's pretty much just trying to co-opt Shane as a client for Jeffrey Star Cosmetics. It's a business proposal. But Jeffrey takes a very personal route. First, he meets him and Andrew at the door, not without admitting to show them the new buildings he just bought. Letting Smart. them know consciously that the business has grown a lot over the past year. Smart. Then they sit down and Jeffrey describes the process of producing the makeup. Pressing the shadows, manufacturing it, the workers, putting them all in there, and then you're buying the unit card that comes in. So there's a lot that goes into it. He talks about how other brands use cheaper materials because all they care about is profit. But I'm willing to take the hit because this is art to me and I'm not in it. So this could be a 75, 80 dollar moment. But that's just not me. And what he's actually doing at this point is he's building up the vision behind his brand. He's describing it from the inside out, starting with why he's in this business. It's a sort of love letter to the art of makeup. So he makes it clear that he believes in his product and takes pride in creating world famous formulas. And makes it, it personal. doesn't feel like pitching to a potential client at all. What he's doing instead is talking about his passion and inviting a friend to share his vision and take a seat at his table of success. And once he's established this shared vision, he goes even further by being transparent about numbers and percentages, telling Shane how all of these other people have gotten ripped off because they didn't know any better. Here's, here's an example. Comparing. This is so this isn't me. What he was doing was comparing. That's what you want to do when you want to sell your business. You have to compare to other businesses and what you're doing better is what you're trying to pitch. Smelling the tea or anything. Nikki Totora was a with two faces. She accepted a deal. They gave her a flat fee of 50000 And that was it. She made no money from the pallets. Um, the brand went on to sell over $10 million of product. Off um, of her name uh, and her brand. And she got just a little flat fee and some dirt. No residuals, nothing. And then finally, Finally, he tells Shane the percentage he's about to give him, 25 to 30 percent, followed by something along the lines of, you deserve it. And because of all of this, Shane is so overwhelmed that he literally starts crying. This business pitch was so freaking well crafted that it made a client cry tears of joy. And it's emotional. And that's why Jeffree Star is a genius businessman. Telling you. Now, would this work on anybody? We don't know, because the circumstances of this partnership are so unique. But it's certainly a great case study of how to get somebody to sign a business deal. It's deeply personalized and cathartic. It's centered around the client. Jeffrey has brought... For example, in any business, when you meet your client, or when you meet potential clients, you want to learn their name fast. Introduce yourself shake their hand, get their name. From the very beginning, throughout the conversation, you want to call them by their name. That way it makes it personable and more comfortable for that client. They feel like they're at home. Business is manipulative, but it works. Dr. Shane, something he never had before. The business knowledge to take his career to the next level and correctly monetize his platform. Shane, on the other hand, has also given something that's equally valuable to Jeffree Star by yes. showing a side of him to the world that he's unable to show on his own. The kind and thoughtful part of his personality that might help repair some of the damage to his reputation. Both of them seem to have brought the best out of each other. And let's face it, they're both going to make a sh ton of money because of this. <laughs> but I'm curious to hear your thoughts on all of this they down are. below. I'm very intrigued to see how this series develops, particularly as we approach the dreadful moment in May when all hell broke loose with the James Charles scandal. It's going to be very interesting to see how it all looked from their perspective as they documented the entire thing in real time. What do you think, Wilfer? Wilfer? Are you hiding behind the couch again? Alright, I had to cut it there because he does like a, like a little outro to his videos. But what, tell me what you think about this whole series with Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star. What do you think about that business? You think Shane Dawson's gonna make lots of money off of it? And of course, Jeffrey will also be making money. What do you think about each individual? Let me know, comment below, but I love it. And I apologize for stopping the video a few times and talking, but this is like, this is, inter this is interesting to me. Let me know what you thought. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And please do not forget to turn on your notification bell. It'll notify you every time I upload. Also, please subscribe to Bliss and Press. That's my vlogging channel with my wife. See you in the next video. Peace.